After you've cranked the number of leg rows you want, stop with the main mark at four o'clock. As I mentioned earlier, you could choose to make a deeper heel if you want, uh, and that's the space between like the bottom of the heel and the, the instep of your foot. And you would do that now as you are getting ready to um, lift the needles to start the heel. You really needed to have taken that into account with your math calculations earlier, but the way you would do it is that we're going to lift the needles out of work and typically, and how I'm going to do it today, I'm going to lift half the needles, half the cylinder. So I'm going to work the sock over the bottom half of the cylinder. But if I wanted to do more, I could actually leave more needles in work up towards these wedge heel targets. You don't really want to go past the wedge heel targets, but I could choose to lift fewer needles out of work to have a deeper heel if I wanted to. Like I said, for now, I am just going to crank the regular sock as I had planned with 50% of the needles being worked for the heel. So I'm going to lift the needles, starting with the first needle to the right of the main mark. And again, don't do that too ferociously because you don't want the needles to jump out of the cylinder completely. And I've lifted all the needles until the last one just before the halfway mark. Now I'm going to crank until the lifted needles are in front of the yarn feeder. So with the needles lifted, that means I can now crank back and forth with the cylinder. But the lifted needles have to be in front of this cam area in order to go back and forth like that. I'm going to engage the heel spring, which will help remove the, pull up the slack as I knit back and forth. My yarn is under the break. And remember, you can just take this off if you didn't remember to do that already when you first threaded your sock yarn in. So it's under the break. <clears throat> and then you're going to move the heel spring forward. And in front of the break is where you pick up the yarn and put it in the little hook. Lift the last needle worked. So that's always the one, the one you lift is always the one that has the yarn attached to it. The last one that was knit. So you're gonna lift that one and then crank back around. And one tip is that for the first needle that will be knit, as it comes back around, kind of push it in just a little bit and you can watch to make sure that it knits. And then also always watch that last stitch to make sure it knits and make sure your knitting needles have completely cleared the cam area. You stop hearing the clicking before you stop cranking. So after we did that first row, we're now going to add our three heel forks. Remember the tips go in toward the middle, reach up underneath. You're gonna put one right in the middle between your two target needles. And then you're going to put one right over here. It doesn't do any good to put them in front of lifted needles. You need to put them in front of lowered needles. So kind of the first lowered needles beside the lifted needles. And we'll do the same on this side. <clears throat> okay. And we're going to continue lifting one needle at a time and cranking around. So again, it's always the last one that you knit is the one that you lift. And again, every time I kind of use my finger just to make sure that first stitch catches. I'm gonna continue like this all the way until you lift the last needles before the target marks. Every few rows, you'll want to stop and move your heel forks up. And in particular, you'll know that needs to happen if the corner stitches don't knit. So for example, that just happened on both of mine, which means I need to move them up. You do not have to remove your soft weight. You can just kind of push the heel forks where they need to go. And remember, you're, oh, they always need to be in front of needles that are 
are down. It's very easy to fix those stitches that didn't knit. You just take your loom tool, pull the needle forward, and insert the tool into the bottom stitch, pull it up and over. That's it, very easy. Again, you can keep track of whether you lifted the last um, needle or not, because if the one that has the working yarn attached to it is still down, it needs to be lifted before you crank back the other direction. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.